Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. We are learning what is happening in the last days, and we need to be ready for the rapture. Because the Word of God, Exodus 20, verse 3, says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. This is the Bible is one book, perfect unity, John 17, 3. This is what every person needs to understand. This is life eternal, that we may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. From Genesis, the Bible bears witness to one God. Total revelation concerning Jesus Christ. It's all about him. He is the only way to heaven. He is the only way to heaven. There is no other way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. John 14, 6. The Bible forms one continuous story, the story of humanity in relation to God. It has to be a personal individual gift that we receive. No works, just believe in what Christ has done for us. And then we see the Bible is a progressive unfolding of the truth. This is the Bible is pure as silver tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. And this is something that every person must know. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against this book. There is none. Every word of this book is as pure as silver tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. And then this is the voice full of majesty. Psalm 29, verse 4, the Lord is powerful. This is something that every one of us must know and reverence this book. Then we see these words are true and faithful, Revelation 21.5. Revelation 22.6, these words are faithful and true. Proverbs 30, verse 5, every word of God is pure. You see, Jesus Christ is the living word. This is the living word. Add thou not to his words. Proverbs 30, verse 6, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. From beginning to the end, the Bible has one great theme, the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus is his earthly name. He's our Savior. He, to know him as Lord that's what we need to understand. That's why we call him Christ. He's our Lord, our Master. From beginning to end, the Bible testifies of one redemption. Ephesians 1, 7, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of of his grace. This is what we're learning in these lessons, that we must get back to the Word of God, because today Satan, since we're living in the days of apostasy, he's trying to deceive the very elect. And you will be deceived if you don't know this book. That's why it is pure as silver. That's Psalm 12. Verse 6. This is why we are to study this word and to obey it and live it.
Let's pray. O oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and praise Thee for this wonderful book. We thank Thee and praise Thee that this is the love letter of God to every individual in the world. This book is His divine love manifested throughout from Genesis to Revelation. Help every person to receive this gift today. For God so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son, that if you believe in Him, you will never die, but have everlasting life. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So we see that this Old Testament reveals that there is a supreme being. We have to know this. He's the creator of all things, all people, every person. He's a source of all life. He's the source of all life. He is to be worshipped by every true believer. You can't worship until you have the Spirit of God dwelling in you. The Spirit of God and the Word of God. That's how we worship Him in spirit and in truth. And then we are to serve Him after we become a child of God. This is supreme being is one. That's why we're one body. We are to love one another as He loves us. This is another great command in these last days. God is no respecter of persons. He loves us all the same, and we are to do the same thing. He requires righteousness from man, but saves the unrighteous through his sacrifice by his blood. So with his redemption, this is what we are all to do. He's dealing with every individual need that we have. My God shall supply all of your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If you want to know what peace is and life, it's in this book. That's why I'm giving these out. So you can know that all of His attributes, all of His resources are ours because this is a heavenly divine message, and this is what is needed. So we see this, this is the acquired glory of our Lord in the New Testament, and how the believer participates in the sevenfold acquired glories. Whatsoever we do, do all to the glory of God. We're to be changed from glory to glory, His glory. Such are His acquired glories and our participation in them. You have to live this book to know His will. You have to live it. There's no other way. The consummation of all is not now, but in that coming day of glory. When He is manifested, we shall be manifested with Him in glory. Revelation 19, the second coming of Christ in glory. We're going to come back with Him, with this beautiful, glorious body. This is what He has for the world. His own will, this, His own believers will be with Him in that glory, and they shine in His glory. Let's read what 2 Thessalonians 1.10 says. All of these, you must give them out to another person. That's how you serve the Lord, by giving His Word out. So 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 10, he says, When He shall come to be glorified in His saints, we're saint of God. He's brought us out of darkness into light, into the saints of light and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Verse 12. Now this is Second Thessalonians 1, 12. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and ye in Him, according to the grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what he wants for every true believer. And then in 1 Peter 1, verse this, you know, as you get into this book, 
there's more than you can ever comprehend all of your life. I have studied it every way that can be studied. I started this new year off with the greatest blessing I've ever had, reading a book a day. Not a chapter a day, a book a day, except, of course, for the long chapters like Isaiah and Ezekiel and some of the longer books. It takes more than one day. But that is the best thing that's ever happened to me. It is a, I have enjoyed it tremendously. And then in 1 Peter 1, verse 7 and 8, that the trial of your faith, being more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 8, whom having not seen you love, and whom though now you see him not, yet rejoicing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. He's an unspeakable gift. We can never, I, the more I give out about him, the more I see we have failed in not giving these out to the world. And that's what God is doing. That's why you need to pray for me. And in Colossians 1, verse 12, listen, I mean, it is so amazing. Listen at this, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light. That's the prayer I want you to pray for us, for every believer, starting in verse 9 in Colossians 1 all the way through, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. This is something to be thankful for. And then Revelation 3, 4, And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy, purity and holiness. And then we see in all of these, this is throughout his word, he reveals the light of heaven unto the world. When I give this out, that's the shining light of the glory of Christ because he's the living word and not one word is going to fail. If you think about when you read, as I was reading Joshua, I got so excited because he parted the Red Sea for them when they came out of Egypt. They came out by power and blood because they were in bondage for 400 years. Everybody that's not a child of God is a slave to sin in bondage. And then when those priests, I thought of the faith that he has given me, has been the greatest blessing in the world because I live by faith. I don't do this for money. I do it for you, for the glory of God. And when those priests, and it brought new light to me of a greater faith than he had already given me, that when those priests with that ark was going to cross over into the land of Canaan, that Jordan River, the priests put their feet there with that ark, and that water went all the way back, and it was at a flood stage at that time, and to a heap all the way up to the Salt River until they were every one across on dry land. If God has promised you something in this book, he will keep it. Not one word will fail. I thought how little faith we have. All they had to do was to put those feet in that water. And it kept, God kept it up that he's all powerful. He holds this world upon nothing. And he knows the number of the stars and calls them all by name. And we are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I just thought how we fail to live the abundant life is because we fail to obey this book. So I'm thankful that I can give out his word. And then we see he had prayed for our preservation and sanctification of his own. That's what Jesus was doing before he went to the cross. And now he prays for our glorification. Isn't this the most amazing thing to think that he is praying for us in the 
John 17, before he went to the cross. And you ought to read all that he is praying for us, and it's being fulfilled today. But look at 17, 22 through 26. And the glory which thou gavest me, God gave him his glory. I have given them. You see, it's suffering and then glory, that they may be one even as we are one. And he says in Colossians 1, 3, If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God, and you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. That's perfect protection. And then he says in verse 23, I in them, and thou in me, we are one with our Heavenly Father, that they may be made perfect in me, in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me through our lives. The world's watching us. You see, that's what my kids said many years ago. My kids that I taught, my teenagers, I've loved every child I've ever taught. They said, Mrs. Davis, you've got to go see this movie. And I said, I haven't seen a movie since Mary Poppins. They said, but this one, there's nothing in it that would, there's nothing in it that's bad. And I said, I can not support anything that corrupt. This is how they watch you. This is how those children that you teach watch you. This is how we have to live because this is, he loves us so much. He saved us from an eternal hell. Father, he said, I will. And then let me go back to 23 again, that, that we will be perfect and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved them, me. He loves us the same as he does his son that never sinned because he can't look upon our sin because it's covered with the blood. But if there's sin in your life unconfessed, you will not receive answers to prayer. You have to confess it and forsake it. You must repent of our sins. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. That's his desire for us to be in heaven with him. That's why he suffered so. I am, I am. I am that they may behold my glory, where I am that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. You see, he's a son of God. He's always been the son of God. You see, this love is something that I can't even comprehend, but I accept it because it's the word of God. So the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them. The, in resurrection, the Father rewarded him for his faithful work. This is the divine righteousness of God. His ever-blessed Son came to the earth, glorified his Father in everything he did, in his death and on the cross in which he vindicated the holy character of God. He always came to make known and manifest the Father. We are to make known and manifest Christ in our daily walk and satisfied his righteousness in our behalf of lost sinners. Now the acquired glory of our Lord and our participation in them, the sevenfold, the first one is he received in resurrection the glory of sonship, inasmuch as he is the first begotten from the dead. Romans 8, 14 through 16. Listen at this. This is the most amazing thing when you think of all that he's done for us. Romans 8, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of of God. What did he say in John 1? That, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. 
just believe in John 1, 12, you become this son of God. For ye are not you have not received the spirit of bondage, no more, no more slave, no more bondage, again to fear, because if you have fear, you're not trusting the Lord. I've not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We can call him Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our witness that we are the children of God. Verse 17. This is eight, chapter 8 of Romans, verse 17. And if children, then ours, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, if so be, that if we suffer, we shall also be glorified together. This is what he wants for every one of us. And then Galatians 3, this is the most important thing for anyone to think that you are different than another person and that there's something in you that makes you special. We're all the same in God's sight. No pride. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It's what's in us that counts. God sees that. The world sees this outward, but God sees the real us. For ye, now this is Galatians 3, verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you has, as have been baptized into Christ, he baptizes us with the Spirit of God upon us, and to Christ have put on Christ. And now listen at this. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. We're all one in Christ. You're no different. Nobody. He's the head of this body. And we are to all be one. And then he says, For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. This is the greatest sin today of people not loving one another. That you can't receive the blessings if you don't love. And if you be able, if you be Christ, we are Christ's child, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This is what we have, the heirship. We are sons of God. This is what we have. And then God made him the heir of all things, the glories of heirship. Now, we've just been reading about his glory. Christ is God, and all the glory of God is his glory. But to make redeemed humanity, redeemed through his own precious blood, it takes the blood of Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And his blood was perfect. We are sharers of all things that is his. And he's the head of all things. And they all belong to us. There's no sense of anybody in the world being poor. There's, you don't need to be a slave. You don't need to be in bondage. Just accept this gift. And God made him heir of all things as the head of the new creation. We are heirs of God and fellow heirs of Christ. We are sons of God. We're heirs of God. That's the first two things. And then God gave him a glorious place for a reward that is in heaven. The glories of heaven are ours. This is so amazing. God seated him at his own right hand of the majesty on high, Hebrews 1, 3. We are going to be with him. In fact, he tells us in Ephesians 1, 3 that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we see in him we are seated in the heavenly places right now, exalted with him. And he's in us. That is so amazing. And then the fourth one, he received as his reward a glorious name, the name above every name. And as it is written, I will give him a white stone. This is talking about us. Written which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it, the promise 
to the overcomer in Revelation 2, 17. Now, don't you, all of you that have listened today, isn't this a way to live? There's no other way to live because everything else is worldly and the world is our enemy. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Revelation 2, 17, listen at this. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. See, we're to hear this word. That's why he gave us ears. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and the stone in his a new name for every one of us, that which no man knoweth but those that receive it. Have you ever in your life heard anything so wonderful? How could you not accept this gift today? The gift of eternal life. This is what he wants for every person. His own are to reign and rule with him. Revelation 5.10 And we shall reign on the earth. Revelation 24 And we lived and reigned with Christ. Revelation 26 We are priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him. You see, we have a great high priest in heaven. He's our advocate. He's our mediator. He's our intercessor. He's praying. Christ, as our great high priest today, is praying night and day for us. How could you ever be sad? He says, let not your heart be troubled. Fear not and have perfect peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Just get in this book and claim these promises and use these videos that we can see the greatest revival the world has ever known. The only way it can be done is through this book, The Living Word. And I'm praying this is what God is going to do. Thank you for listening. Next week, things get better every week because that's what his word is. I have not seen nor ear heard the glories he has for us. Somewhere.